Okay. From confusion. Sometimes I'll say something in a video like 90% of everybody will get it and 10% of people will be totally confused. When I said in a prior video a couple days ago talking about how ISO is not connected to exposure and it damn well is not, I also said it's really important to practice ETTR whenever possible exposed to the right eye. You saturate in sensor, saturate in your camera because you cannot manifest information that was never there to begin with. You know how the old saying goes, you expose for the highlights and develop in, in post-production for the shadows. I said you saturate and censor and expose in post-production and people took the word exposure a little too literally because obviously in many applications there's this neat little thing called the exposure slider. Well, the exposure slider is of course not really actual exposure because uh, true exposure is only and ever capturing data and recording it onto some other type of media, SD card, CF card, whatever, in your camera. So when I'm actually talking about expose in post-production, saturate and censor and expose in post-production, what I'm referring to is obviously you need to sculpt the light however you want with your camera at the time the shot's taken, but I'm talking about in post-production is obviously making the shot look to the aesthetics that you had in your mind or that you think is most beautiful or what you had planned it to be. Everything, of course, is about uh, absolute uh, repeatable consistency and, of course, you cannot manifest, like I said, details that were never there to begin with. You can pump up the exposure in post-production, but it's not actual exposure. What you're actually doing is, depending on which application you're using, you're raising up the shadow information in uh, Lightroom or uh, Photoshop or in uh, Capture One or whatever it is that you're using. I said and implied exposure in post-production as specifically pertains to suiting the shot and the aesthetics or the look, however you wanted the shot to uh, ultimately end up as. Obviously you can't do anything in uh, post-production as pertains to uncaptured data. You know there's a lot of magic you can do in Lightroom and Photoshop but obviously you can't make uh, if it's underexposed, you obviously can't make a uh, muddy lack of uh, detail in the shadows magically appear. It just can't happen. Um, you can slide the accutants over. You can sharpen it. You can do less of it. You can't make stuff appear that was never captured to begin with. No matter even if you shot, uh, you know, 16-bit raw. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. There's a lot of stuff you can pull out. Um, so I needed to clarify that when I said uh, saturate and sense. I mean, I was completely correct when I said it, but I didn't very, very specifically clarify when I said saturate in camera and expose in your computer. There's obviously no exposure that can actually go on here, and the exposure slider is not really exposure. What I'm talking about is manifesting the shot to the aesthetics and the look that you desire with whatever post-production software, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, um, Affinity Photo, on and on. To, uh, that you use, so I uh, wanted to clarify that. Um, some other YouTuber, someone uh, told me they told another YouTuber that I said that and they said I was wrong. I said, well, you should go back and ask them why I was wrong because there is absolutely no downside, downside to ETTR. I'm not saying that you should blast the hell out of every shot. Like if someone wanted a rim light shot where everything is mostly black, for example, and you know only one edge of like a building or a person's body is lit this is the bad part about using uh, uh, mirrorless cameras is because you got wissy wig and people will make the shot look like that in your camera and and you know superficially that seems like a good idea but it's a really shitty idea because you can make it look like that and you could do this yourself all right just don't even take my word for it just do it do a wissy wig on your mirrorless camera and make the shot look how you ultimately want it to look and then capture it and then do it my way where you still have the exact same lighting levels right where this one edge that you want lit is the same I say a building is just rim lit right but then crank up the exposure two or three stops so you have all as much detail possible I'm never saying blowing the highlights crank up the shot as far as it will go on the speculars i.e. that rim lighting on the building or a person's body. Then you have a lot more to work with. You could still make the shot look 95% dark if that's how you want it to look with that rim lighting on the person's body or on a building. 
but you have all that data there to work with. When there's, a, there's the old saying that an incoming tide raises all boats, right? You can get what that means? What that means is that this is also a, a political premise, too, that like when you help everybody and you drop money, money out there, you help everybody. But the, the, the point is, is that incoming tide raises all boats. It raises the big boats and it raises the little boats, right? This is an ancient saying. The same thing true is true it applies to exposure. This is why ETTR is so important. When you raise all boats and give the maximum amount of saturation possible to the shot, then there is much detail there for the highlights as there is in the shadows would be like the little boats, right? There's not much light there, but when you raise them all, you raise them all when the waves come in. Uh, when the water comes in, this of course is, uh, you know, the metaphor for the exposure. And, uh, but you can make the shot look however you want, obviously in post-production. This is exactly why no one can prove me wrong. Saturating and sensor and expose, and I don't mean literally expose, because exposure is true recording of detail and information here. But I mean exposure. Make it look how you want in your computer. So this is the clarification from the video from a few days ago. Duh. I love that old uh, saying about an, in, uh, an incoming, I think it's an incoming tide raises all boats. Um, because when you expose and you get lazy with WYSIWYG with a mirrorless camera, it's like, this is how they shot, want the shot to look, this looks good, click. And then you go and your post-production is like, well, this doesn't look too good, you know. Even my highlights look a little muddy. Yeah, it's because you had it on matrix metering, or it doesn't matter what metering you really had it on. But you exposed it to where everything was in, in the shadows, except for that, yeah, but that's the way I wanted it to look. It's like... You can do that in your computer. You don't have to do that in your, in your camera. If it already looks that way, saturate it as far as it will go without blowing anything out. That way you've captured as much detail, as much information as is humanly possible given the dynamic range of your camera, whatever the hell that is. And then you have all that detail to work with. So you actually have more detailed information in your highlights and your midtones and your shadows. Because once you're in post-production, you may want to, you know, expose it this way, but we will raise the shadows up a little bit. Well, if you did it using WYSIWYG, then the camera didn't really capture many details in the shadows. So when you go and raise the shadows up in post-production, the shadows look like crap and mud. But if you did ETTR, then there's as much detail as is possible in the shadows. And then you've got more to work with. There's no downside to capturing as much information as possible. There is no downside. You obviously need to sculpt the light to however you want it to look, but that doesn't mean you need to expose it via WYSIWYG. Everybody talks about WYSIWYG on mirrorless cameras. I get why everybody loves it, but it is ultimately not good for the very reasons that I just illuminated. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can always click the link below. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Happy holidays and all that other Christmas-related crap. <laughs> Peace out, Girl Scout. Oh, this German mineral water is so good. Is he really drinking water at the end of this video? God, that's good shit. Yes, I am. Boom. Do, 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 do.